Brought to you by DigiKey and your fruit this week. It is diodes. More. What is this week's new product introduction? Okay, NPI. this week from Diodes Incorporated, we're going to, and I think we haven't covered them before, so I'm excited. This is the PAM 8019E, a uh, really nice all in one audio amplifier for speakers and headphones, with a lot of little nice fixings and a really great price. Um, so, this is the PAM 8019E. Um, comes in 20 pin QFN, 4 millimeter or 3 millimeter square. And um, we actually use a bunch of the PAM chips as audio amplifiers that we you know, use in various boards. We break out some of our most popular um, amplifiers. Uh, the ones we've got are single channel, 3 watt, class D mono um, output. And I have been looking for a stereo output. And this one is really nice because not only does it have stereo. Uh, speaker output, but also has headphone output and runs from like 2.7 to 6 volts. So it's great for like hobbyist projects that run on a couple batteries. Um, and it's got a little bit, a couple upgrades, but the price isn't that much higher than just a single mono channel. Uh, so as I mentioned, runs from about 3 to 6 volts. Uh, stereo Class D amplifier, you know, they're like, in theory, you can do up to like, well, you can do 2 watts through each channel, basically. So, for, so uh, four watts total. Uh, sorry, no, they say up to 3.3 watts per um, channel if you want to stay within 1% uh, THD. If you're willing to go up to 10% THD, uh, you can do four watts. And then, of course, don't forget uh, two channels a piece. So um, to make sure your power supply can handle that much current. And then, in addition, there's a separate Class D, sorry, Class AB headphone amplifier um, that does about, uh, yeah, about 50 to 100 milliwatts or so. Um, a couple of the extras we'll chat about is the non-clip power limit that they really like. Uh, there's short detection, which is really good. Um, and then um, uh, uh, spread spectrum, so you can pass EMI with just uh, ferrite beads. And then um, thermal or current protection, plus um, I like the volume adjust. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, it's a pretty simple chip. Don't forget this is analog in and out only. So if you have digital output like I2S, you'll need a separate I2S DAC to convert your data to analog. Um, but if you're doing like analog stuff or synth stuff or you just have a PWM output you're willing to filter or you happen to have a DAC on your board, um, then you can use this. Or maybe you're just doing a pure analog uh, setup where you have audio uh, generated from some analog means or you want to just amplify um, from some line level. Uh, two channel input, single ended, not differential. Um, just put a 0.1 microfarad cap uh, between, that's on the, on the left hand side, between the input. Uh, it'll internally bias it. Um, you can only have speaker or headphone. You can't have both at the same time, which makes sense. Usually you have one or the other. Usually a switch on the headphone jack is what selects between the two. So when you plug in the headphone, it automatically switches over. Um, there's mute, there's shutdown. Uh, you know, there's a, you'll need a lot of bypass caps, two speaker outs, one stereo headphone out, you'll need bypass caps for that. So on the Class D side, the speakers, you know, they're, they're heavy duty, they're a lot of wattage. Um, by having bridge tied load output, uh, you can get, you know, quote unquote twice as much output um, to uh, each side of the speaker, which is, which is what lets you get to that three or four watt output. Um, Class D is going to be more efficient when you're dealing with the high currents dealing with speakers. What's nice is, um, well, so with the bridge tide load, uh, just be aware you can't like connect this to a line level output to another speaker. Then you can't amplify again. It connects directly to the speaker. The speaker actually acts as um, the inductor that filters the high frequency PWM from the Class D amp. It's like 440 or 400 kilohertz. So it's like 20 times as high as the highest frequency. Um, the inductor filters it out. It doesn't even respond to that high frequency. So, you know, it's you, you get a lot in efficiency, um, although there is a little bit of a, a, a noise, a buzz noise that can filter out um, if you have like very long cables, for example. Uh, but that's okay. Again, it's like a 30 cent chip, so that's what you're getting. Uh, they do recommend putting some cheap ferrite beads. You don't need big inductors, big caps. It's just just to, just to basically take the edge off of the uh, square wave that goes into the two speakers. And then 
for the headphone apple like i said you can have one or the other um you do need two big caps because they're expecting that you might use the headphone either with like proper 16 or 32 ohm speakers or you might use it as a line level out um, in which case you can't have a floating ground eh, so you need two uh 220 microfarad electrolytic caps they're inexpensive but they are a little bit bulky the one kilo ohm resistor there is used to detect to, you know do the signal detect and stuff um, for the headphone amp, we use class AB, not class D. Why? Well, for 50 milliwatts, it's not worth having the extra circuitry to try to save power for um, 50 milliwatts. Uh, and secondarily, class AB does sound better because it's, it's you know, got this pure uh, analog in, analog out. There is no PWM conversion. So class AB for the headphone. Um, you can't have both at the same time uh, when there's a, this digital pin that switches from high to low, I've seen as the pink line here, it switches between the speaker and headphone. What I like is it does this kind of slow volume up, there's no popping. So even if you're switching over like in the middle of a waveform, it'll um, you know, turn off the previous selected speaker headphone and then slowly ramp up over the course of like a couple hundred milliseconds or so, um, the audio to the other selected output um for look you know you have to decide how much teaching you want to deal with i, I think 10 percent is pretty high you know sticking to one percent is quite good um if you want to get the most power you'll need 5.8 volts which is like what four, like three four alkaline it's kind of a hard number to get but around five volts you can definitely get two watts into um a four ohm load on the speaker and then uh, likewise, about like 50, 50 milliwatts um, for the headphone, and you'll stay at good quality. Uh, one nice thing about this is um, we tend to use, we, we've historically used what's it, the PAM 8902, I think, or 80, 8402 is the one that we've used a lot of. And um, as you see, the input here goes straight into like these 10K resistors into the um, audio amplifier it's a differential input with 150k in the feedback and so that's your 15 time gain and so if you want to reduce the gain you would put a potentiometer on the input and um you know that 10 to 100k resistance on the input changes the feedback gain for the um inverting amplifier on the input but it means that your audio is going through a potentiometer which kind of sucks because whenever you're going through a potentiometer there's the risk for scratchiness um, there's the, you know, risk of um, wearing out the potentiometer and there's like a little bit of hysteresis, you know, as, as if it jitters, it's like it's going to jitter the output. So what I like on this chip is that there's a digital input with like steps, individual steps. And so you don't have to worry about like, oh, the voltage goes a little bit above or below. That's not going to affect the output volume. It has to step quite a bit um, past each level in order to change the gain, there's 64 gain steps. Also, it's a, it's not a resistor, it's a true like digital, it's a, sorry, it's a analog voltage input. And so you can control it with a DAC or you can control it with, you know, a filtered PWM if you want. So there is some digital control um, or you can use a potentiometer. Uh, another uh, nice thing is, you know, for, especially for low cost goods, it's really easy to clip the speakers. Um, and what's nice here is that they have a clipping control. There's like a gain setting. So you tell it basically like how much you're willing to have the volume output, output be. So if you have like really quiet audio and then, you know, it gets really, really loud all of a sudden, um, it won't damage your blowout or sound really like bad and clippy. It will, um, after that attack level at the bottom there, it'll, it'll reduce the gain until it uh, gets below the max power you want on the speaker. All this for like 35 cents. It's such a good deal. So the PEM 8019 EFH is in stock. I already bought some. Check it out. Um, it's a great stereo um, analog output yeah. to speakers or to headphones. Good price. You get to choose. Even just if it did one or the other, it would be a great price. Yeah. Well, because once you add it, it does what? Double the cost in your bottom? Like when you... I, okay, you, look, audio amps can be very expensive, but mm -hmm. it's like a 30 cents. It's such a good deal. 
Um, I mean, like, you, any audio amp is not going to be about the same price. For this one, you get, like, so much. You get stereo and headphone and the digital uh, voltage control. Yeah, this is a good on AMPI. Yeah. Good one. All right. That's a I like it. on AMPI. I like on AMPI.